Hi, Steve here, and in this tutorial, I'm showing you a quick and easy way to use Photoshop's Warp tool to create the perfect composition in your landscape images. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below to let me know so that I can keep making more just like it. And remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification icon so YouTube will notify you every time I publish a new video. And if you want to download my free guide on my six stage Photoshop workflow, then I'll put a link in the description below as well and you can go and download that and that will give you the framework that I use to create high quality and consistent results in my images every time in Photoshop. So the image on the screen at the moment is what we're going to use for this, uh, this tutorial. And the issue that I faced at the time when I was capturing this image was that I just could not get the perfect composition with these three rocks in the foreground lining up exactly how I wanted them compared to the rest of the scene. And so having done my best to get as close to what I wanted as I could in camera, I now can open this in Photoshop and use the warp tool to actually just tweak the placement of these three rocks to put them exactly where I want. So this is how we do that. Now this is a processed version of my finished image. So you know what you're going to want to do normally is make this one of the first things that you do in your workflow. The reason for that is that you know with the composition changing certain things like you know these other small rocks in the foreground in this example, yeah, you know, they might end up out of the frame. So you know you basically just want everywhere, everything where it's going to be for you to then continue on with the process. So you're usually going to be working, you know, if you've got a single image, then you'll have like your background layer. And let me just make some room over here. So what you want to do is actually duplicate this background layer like so. And that will become obvious why in just a moment. Uh, but first we're going to take the rectangular lasso tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle across the bottom half of the image like this and then we're going to go to the edit and transform and warp and that gives us this grid with the, all of these different control points that we can use to manipulate the shape of everything that's inside that selection so what we'll do, I'll probably try and bring this large rock here on the left, we'll try and bring that down a little bit. Maybe this rock here will try and make a little bit more central and we'll just see where this one goes um, Yeah, and then adjust it from there. Now I'll just zoom out so that we can control this, uh, this particular control point here. So I'm just going to pull that and drag it down and we can see things are sort of warping and moving down this way. Now you've got all kinds of options here and I really would recommend experimenting with how each of these different control points on the edge of the grid um, affect the image compared to another thing that you can do which is just click inside each one of these uh, like quadrants and just shift everything around and move it so we can move this this way a bit we can move this back this way and you know you can kind of do it just by shifting everything around by eye using this uh, you know this method or you can click and drag any of these control points here and you know actually change the shape of what's you know what's in the uh, what's in the frame now i think you know like i said i'm going to try to bring this rock here down and to the left a bit and this one here i'll try and bring it to the right and then maybe well, essentially there's uh, there's no defined way that I can tell you to uh, maneuver your images. So you're just going to have to basically experiment with, you know, placing everything where you want it uh, because every image is going to be different, obviously. Uh, but in this case, um, I think this kind of makes a bit more sense. You know, we've covered a bit more of the foreground here with these rocks. So I'm just going to hit return on the keyboard to... Um, to accept that change and now I'll deselect command or control D on the keyboard and now this is the original layer and now this is the new layer with the warp and here the only problem we can see now is that we've got this line across the middle where you know we've transformed the uh, you know the bottom half of the image and 
how it's kind of the edge of that transformation has kind of uh, you know not blended in with the original image so what we'll have to do here is just add a layer mask to this top layer and grab a black brush and I'm just going to gradually sort of blend that edge so that that hard edge disappears like so and yeah this is basically it so now we have the original layer like this and the new layer which has got our new our newly um, composed foreground so this is the original and this is the new now what you will have to be careful of like with this image in particular is any reflections so you know you want to make sure that you're not warping something so much that the reflections don't really make sense anymore but i think in the case of these clouds you know we can kind of get away with that that's not too much you know it doesn't look obviously warped um yeah the the clouds there are kind of lining up okay so i'm happy with this um but essentially that is the tip that i wanted to give you for today which is to you know have a think about the placement of any objects in your image and you know your ability to use that transform tool with uh, with the eye to moving those objects around and just tweaking them to create that perfect composition so with that said i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll talk to you soon cheers